Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Between the Studs. Hope you're having an excellent day today. We're doing pretty good. We're super excited. We're going to be talking about episode three today. But who are we? We've got three people here. It's Mark, Ethan, and Chris. Now, you've seen me and Chris before, but Ethan is actually pretty new to the channel. Is this your first time doing yeah, a video with us? it is my first time. That's awesome. So, um, Ethan, what yeah. are some things you do at the store? How long have you been working at the store? So, I started mid-January, mm -hmm. and I mainly just do customer service, so yep. answering the phone, you know, whatever that. Uh, yeah. Working on the register. Yeah. yeah. I will intercede here, though. Uh, Ethan is really good with minifigures, mm -hmm. and he catches things that... Everybody else misses. Like yeah. really, it's really, really small details, tiny yeah. details. And it's like, wow, how did you catch that? And I'm trying to think of some. Uh, Anakin's hair, for one. I mean, I should have caught that to begin with. Mm -hmm. but there was there was been other things. Oh, San Diego Comic-Con, mm -hmm. Batman's face. I thought it was just a plain old face, regular old face. His mouth is just crooked just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even yeah. handle him. I don't know how, yeah, how I just he noticed looked, it. Yeah, I was like, I was looking at one of the figs and then I noticed it. It was off. I was like, oh. Yeah. So wow. he's got, he must have the, a really good photographic memory. And yeah. really good eyesight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that probably helps. Yeah. Probably. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So you're doing minifigures while in between helping customers and stuff yeah, up there. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. yeah. So you like working here? You're enjoying oh, yeah. the Lego scene? It's awesome. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Awesome. All right. So let's dive into the movie here. We've got um, intro to the movie, um, episode three, Revenge of the Sith. This is, I think, one of the more intense and maybe even a little bit dark, especially towards the end, yeah. uh, Star Wars movies. Because a lot of them are very, you know, inspirational, joyous. They're beating the bad guys. This is one where the bad guys kind of end with a smile on their faces. Um, what are you guys' thoughts about the movie? Let's go around and talk about it. And like, when was the first time you saw it? What was some first impressions, and what's like a long-lasting impression for you guys? So we'll start with you, Chris. What did, what uh, what does Episode Three mean to you? Uh, it's I saw it when it first came out in theaters. Uh, nice. It must have been two thousand three, maybe. Yeah, like three yeah, or four. I think. Four or five. Yeah. Okay. A few years later. Um, and I I loved it when it came out. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I still love it. I think I like it more and more every time I see it. I saw it about three weeks ago to jog my memory. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that happened? That happened? I don't remember. Like, I couldn't remember a lot of the things that were going on. There is a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's, it's to me, it's all gold. Yeah. Like, I just absolutely love it. I like all the prequels, though. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't. Yeah. yeah. I'd say that um, of all the prequels, this one has the least things that you can critique about it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It has the least errors. There's so many, and like I, I like how you pointed out, like you watch it again and you're like, wow, all this stuff is happening. It has so many dynamic twists and turns for the story mm -hmm. that it's like, you kind of like, wow, all this amazing groundbreaking changes to this entire universe happened in this movie and set up mm -hmm. a whole trilogy and more. So Ethan, yeah. what are your, some of your thoughts about uh, episode three? Um, when was the first time you saw it? I saw it? it like, I was probably, I probably saw it like nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I was on the couch with my dad, and I remember it pretty well, but, yeah, so I just remember it being, like, just, because I hadn't seen, like, anything before then, so I remember, mm -hmm. like, General Grievous being, like, this cool character I knew nothing about, so when yeah. I finally saw him, I was just like, this is awesome. Yeah. And then I always wanted to, like, know how Anakin became Vader, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I just feel like if you had to watch one Star Wars movie, this would be the one to watch. Yeah. yeah. How many times have you seen this movie, do you think? <laughs> um... Probably in the three to four hundred range. Mm. Wow! Yeah. 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 I, I, I can tell you're being honest too. You're not yeah. exactly. <laughs> I've seen it a lot. I'm a I'm a one and done kind of guy. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's why I didn't remember a lot of things about it. You've seen it a handful of times. I really but... just sat down and watched it one time mm -hmm. in theaters, and then probably again with my son at one point. Yeah. And uh, that's why I, I missed so many things. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I've seen it probably more along the lines of your um, timing, Chris. Like, I, I saw it once initially. I saw it once when it came out on Disney+. Plus. I'm like, oh, they got all the Star Wars. I watched mm -hmm. a couple of them. And then um, I've seen it in the store. We've, we've played stuff in the background a few times. Um, and then I saw it actually last night to jog my memory and kind of keep all those things fresh because I hadn't seen it since, like, Disney+. Plus came out. So it's been a few months for me. But, um, yeah, like probably four or five times total, you know. 
So it's very impressive that this is yeah. um, now when we're getting on the subject. What are some of your favorite Star Wars movies? I'm guessing this is your favorite Star Wars movie, Ethan. Yeah. And then, um, does this one kind of rank as one of the higher movies? We've talked about how it's less critiqued than the other prequels, but does this rank as some of the higher, best Star Wars movie among the rest of them? Or? Top ten. Top ten? Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's nine no, of them. That's good. Yeah. Uh, top two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah so least. one I, of the favorites. I could not put one above any other. Yeah. Um, it's up right up there with number one. Mm-hmm. That's so, awesome. And then, yeah. Ethan, it's your favorite? This is obviously guessing. my favorite, yeah. yeah. I think it's totally understandable, though. I would say it's, uh, I'm along your your view as well, Chris, it's like probably top two or three. Because, uh, I mean, I like Empire Strikes Back a lot, and, you know, these it's that one or this one, honestly. Well, I guess another interesting thing about Ethan is he does have every single Anakin Lego minifigure. Mm-hmm. I do. I have all of them. Yeah, we'll How see if we can there? load a picture up there's, for you. There's 22 of them, and... I also have a custom ghost one coming out, so. Mm-hmm. Including the uh, kid Anakin yeah, and all that? Yeah, all of them. Okay. Even the ones from Attack of the Clones. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 22 in total, mm-hmm. as of right now. And which one, in would you guess, is the most expensive? Uh, the most expensive one is from Palpatine's Arrest. Mm-hmm. That came out in, like, 2012. Not the light-up one? Mm, I guess it depends it, on who you find selling it. Yeah. yeah. What's, but, what's, I didn't even know there was a light up one. So. Yeah. Actually, no, I think well, yeah. maybe the light up one. He's right in front of you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Of course. No, I, I did know about it then. Sure, I just yeah. wasn't thinking yeah. about it. But. If the light up one's in like great condition, it would probably be the most expensive. Okay. And yeah, it's hard to get them in good condition. Yeah. Because the light up guys got played with a lot because they were so cool. And the battery's and, dead. and Especially every, the capes, though, yeah. too. If you can find a cape in good condition. Cape spray really easy. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're tuning in to the podcast, by the way, this is going to be a very visual between the studs. Yeah. Uh, we're sitting here with a dozen sets from episode three like and 30 a couple characters. dozen yeah. minifigures. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to be talking about them a lot. Yeah, and that's basically once we're getting into this, I would say um, the last few questions about the movie itself would be, um, what are some of your favorite moments that really stick with you? Is like your some of your favorite Star Wars moments from Episode Three specifically? Mm. Uh, okay, when Obi Wan Kenobi fights General Grievous, yeah. and says hello there. Yeah, I mean that is just he lands awesome. there. It's like, it's a meme. Yeah. It's iconic. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, one of the and greatest. Speaking of which, uh, he was just repeating, kind of mocking General Grievous. Because General Grievous said it to him in a fight they did in the back Wars. in the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. So I guess chronologically, as far as when they filmed it, he said it first, maybe? Yes, because yeah. the, the movie would have happened before the Clone mm-hmm. Wars. They were kind of like an after the fact in but between. in so. the story, Grievous would have said it first. Yes. So yeah. it, it kind of worked out, yeah. knowing Obi-Wan's personality and humor. Exactly. He was just saying it back to He him. was pretty sassy. I he mean, was, yeah. And to jump, you know, that's one of the things. To jump down in the middle of all those droids. Hundreds. Droids. What was he thinking? Yeah. <laughs> it's like there had to have been a better way to, for an element of surprise. Yeah. Unless yeah. he's just that awesome. I can think of a dozen <laughs> ways. Awesome. I can think of a dozen yeah. ways it'd be easier to kill Grievous. Like drop one of those weights on his head or yeah. something, you know. Yeah. But uh, he, he's just like, I know I can handle this. He just jumps down and it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 What about you, Ethan? What's one of your favorite moments? Um, my favorite moment is the duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Uh, yeah. I just feel like just the choreograph of the fight is perfect. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't feel like any other duel has come close. It's definitely so. one of the most, like I would say, uh, visceral yeah. uh, duels in Star Wars. I was watching it last night, and I remember it being impactful, but I'm like, this actually really holds up. All the, the kicks, punches, they're yeah. using force pushes and grabs and stuff and so it's like they're using every trick they could possibly come up with for a physical human being with force abilities to fight each other it's awesome yeah so there there's a lot of really good fighting scenes in this mm-hmm. um, multiple yeah and some of them are pretty long like the obi-wan Grievous yeah. one mm-hmm. uh, the anakin obi-wan and then uh at the beginning of the movie there's a Dooku. really good one Dooku, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. Dooku, yep. when they Dooku. cut his he, head off he gets, that was a great duel. he gets absolutely yeah. bested yeah. by anakin it was awesome but but, yeah. but i would say the worst duel in star wars history might be in this movie as well oh really when oh and then you've got yoda versus yeah. palpatine yeah another but, epic but the duel. worst one was when palpatine just slices down 
Kit Fisto. Oh, Pisto. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, it's Kit Fisto, and is it Sassy Ten? Yeah, yeah he, he, he kills Ten. like four Jedi Masters in a span of about a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, that could have been the best yeah. fight scene, but you know why? Maybe it wasn't because of their costumes, and mm-hmm. it was too hard to fight Prosthetics, in those yeah. they have things on their heads, yeah. You yeah. know, and then also when Order 66 comes down and they start killing the Jedi, mm-hmm. uh, those could have been really really good fight scenes mm-hmm, uh, yeah. and I think in a lot of cases they Jedi could have put up a little bit better fight yeah so what I would like to see is the Snyder cut <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. episode 3 like four hour extend cut. it out yeah. 4, mm-hmm. five, six hours maybe yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, show I've all that. these fight scenes so yeah. if, uh, Ethan if there was a Jedi that you wanted to see actually go down not like a punk but actually like a hero and just yeah. take out a bunch of clones before they get eliminated which Jedi would you pick for that extra scene that was 30 minutes fight scene mm, probably Plo Koon Plo Koon yeah because yeah, he like got he, shot down right yeah so. he should have had a better better death yeah and we're, Justice we're for forgetting Plo about uh, Jet Lucas's yeah. fight scene yep uh, George Lucas's son mm-hmm. who was the one outside the Jedi temple yeah he had a little skirmish and then he got shot <laughs> yeah. down yeah yeah. I, I think that it also could be that they were trying to incorporate the tragedy of all the Jedi being killed while still trying to keep within a reasonable runtime for a movie because there's a lot of things that happen in this movie they have to get through so maybe they just didn't have that extra 30 minutes to an hour to mm-hmm. show all these epic duels between other Jedi. So, but yeah. maybe one day, you know, Disney can uh, basically CGI anybody back True. now, so they oh, could yeah. uh, revisit all of that. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One one final note on the the movie before we start diving into sets is I, I'm glad watching it again. I'm like this CGI really holds up. Yeah. I mean, and I can't yeah. say that about a lot of movies, but like Star Wars prequels, still pretty good. I'm like I'm like what, what what would they do better? Better shaders? Better. Uh, light effects, you know, maybe, but yeah. it's really good. Even the space battle scene yeah. at the beginning is just yeah, killer. The, yeah. the, the ships are flying mm-hmm. and zooming, and you got all the aliens look convincing. I don't get Uncanny Valley at anything. In fact, yeah. when I was rewatching it, I was like, wow, did they go back and digitally remaster this or what? Yeah, no. I mean, because it's good. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But talking about our favorite moments, oh, uh, for me, uh, really quickly, I'd say one of my favorite moments is actually just the intro of the movie with that spaceship battle, because that's like. Uh, before that they had some you know I mean obviously the original trilogy had some uh, spaceship battles that were great but this one is like really dynamic in the way it zooms in especially the CGI so that's one of my favorite moments Mm -hmm. and uh, we can start diving into the sets and minifigures and props and kind of we'll go through all of them but um, if you see one pick one out that you really like and I'm going to start with that vulture droid standing over there because uh, one of my favorite scenes from this movie is that huge spaceship battle and the vulture droids were actually extremely effective in this battle. They were taking out um, Obi-Wan and Anakin's escort behind them, and Anakin's like, oh, no, I'm going to go help. And he's like, no, 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 they're doing their job. So yeah. got to throw out my, uh, you know, shout out to the vulture droids doing their job and taking out those clone pilots. But, uh, and they've made a number of vulture droids, mm-hmm. and they're okay looking. Yeah. But they've never been really, really, like, wicked looking. Yeah, I c- and they know? look cool in the movie. They yeah, look yeah. sick in the movie. And then... Um, they're a little small and maybe a little understated in set mm-hmm. form. Maybe we'll see a UCS Vulture Droid one day. <laughs> It'll be the most oddball set ever, but I, I would like it. Yeah. And this one we have here is, um, oh, what time period would you say uh, this is? The Sam Blue 2005, mm-hmm, yeah. so this is probably I the think, second one yeah, they made. Yeah. Um, and that one might not have the stickers, because I don't see the eyes of the droids. doesn't have the stickers, yeah. no. But, um, That's the thing that's so hard about these droids, is they're just droids, you know? Mm-hmm. And they're taken out... Potentially taking out Jedi Knights. Yeah, exactly. They're shooting at their ships trying to get them, so yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, Some of the uh, droid army's assets, like the battle droids themselves, the tan ones, they're absolutely useless, but then you have some that are pretty effective, like, you know, this droid gunship here and the other stuff. It's like, they're pretty... Those guys would actually do some damage. They were probably knocking out plenty of clones and vehicles and speaking oh, yeah. of this uh droid gunship we did we see this on kashik is that it what was? Yeah, Kashyyyk, yeah. um as far as lego sets go this is probably my most hated lego set <laughs> really i do not like it um they don't sell very well mm-hmm. it, there's no f- you can't put a figure in it there's actually i don't i think it's autonomous that's why there's yeah. no figures in it. yeah it's, it's a, a droid it is a yeah. droid yeah. yeah and i just i don't know something about it to me just is not visually pleasing mm-hmm. now if you could if they gave you a stand for it 
it would mm -hmm. probably be a lot better. That does, uh, it, sitting flat on the table, it looks almost like a turtle. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you need a little bit to get it up in the air, they, more as realistic pose. They really should have just given you a really cool uh, trans clear stand mm -hmm. to set this on. Yeah. And then it, then it looks cool. Yeah. yeah. But it's that, and then um, I think it Grievous's bike sleigh, sleigh bike. Oh, this guy right here, the wheel. No, oh, yeah. not the wheel bike. The sleigh, that sleigh oh, thing. Oh, from the Clone came. Wars. Maybe? Was that on Clone Wars? Yeah, that, that's kind of boring too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, Ethan, what's one of your sets here that you want to pick out and talk about here? Um, and it could be a boxed one too. We have a bunch yeah. of cool box sets in the back here. Well, since it's my favorite scene, this is probably one yeah. of the coolest ones we have. This old school um, ultimate duel set, right? Yeah. Let's see if we can get a better view of that right here. Both light up figures. Yep, and this one actually has both light up figures. How I, much does that go for? Us? I think that's new, actually. Yeah. This new is sealed. a new sealed for three hundred. Three hundred. Yeah. That so. doesn't seem bad for a new sealed set because those figures aren't they like one hundred and fifty each? I think so. Just like about. this, this yeah. is yeah. Gonna, you're getting the box, the yeah. set, and everything else basically for free if you buy the two figures yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, in good condition, those actually go for a lot. Mm -hmm. okay, and um, that also had really unique. Um, stands for the minifigures to mm -hmm. make them fight. Right. Yeah, if you can see on the back of the box, it has uh, basically it's similar to the hockey or soccer players of the sports yep. sets at yeah. the time. And you can pose these guys and have them fight, which is very different from most Star Wars or even Lego sets. So. Right. I was at uh, New York Comic Con one year, and the Lego booth was set up this year, mm -hmm. uh, 2014. And... Uh, Danish guy from the Lego booth came over mm -hmm. and he designed the light up figures. Wow. And I said, Oh, well, uh, you know, why aren't you guys making them anymore? And he was like, Oh, they're just too expensive. Yeah. They're just way too expensive mm -hmm. to make. Yeah, they probably had to charge yeah. a little more for this size of set, even this yeah. larger set, because it has those light up figures in it. So, so you can change the batteries. Have you ever changed the battery? Ethan? I have not. It's okay. I'm planning I, to. I though. haven't either. We have a guy that does them for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. <laughs> But it's just like a normal watch battery. You take off the left arm that doesn't have the lightsaber, mm -hmm. and then you you use a tool and you poke the back panel off of them. Yeah, you can yeah. pop it off basically. Yeah, wow. and then you can change the battery in it. Mm. But you can't take off his head. So if their capes are frayed, yeah, then, too bad. I yeah. don't I don't have an answer for that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, yeah, very careful operation. Mm -hmm. Don't do that without adult help. Uh, so yeah. But, um, yeah, let's see. Oh, um, of this movie, there was a couple characters that exclusively came out in this movie, but what are some of the characters that stood out to you particularly? Let's start with Ethan here. You, you're um, in the middle here. You're our expert. I think uh, Chief Tarful is really sweet. He's yeah. got that cool headpiece, and I would say a lot of the Jedi, even though they're in the Clone Wars, they're mm -hmm. really really detailed. They look pretty good. I know this guy, uh, uh, Kai yeah. Almundi, he... Yeah, um, yeah, he um he had a lot more time. He was also talking about the Wookiees as a yeah. funny meme, but he had a lot more screen time in this movie compared to previous installations. Mm -hmm. so oh, that yeah. was cool. Yeah, uh, the Jedi, Kit Fisto, Ayla Secura. Uh, mm -hmm. Ayla is just such a cool character. I yeah, mean, she's really neat with the the Twi'lek tendrils there. Mm -hmm. I don't. Those, they're not called tendrils. They're called Lucas or something like they that. They have a term for them. I have no yeah. idea what it is, but um. And then Sessi Ten mm -hmm. and Kaidi Mundi Plo Koon's in it. I mean, you got some great yeah. Jedi. Yeah. Uh, and then the clones are mm -hmm. so yeah. cool. The Wookies, they got a lot of Wookies in it. Mm -hmm. um, and even the Genosian, or not Genosian. What is this guy? Nemoidian. Nemoidian. Yeah. Yes. The Nemoidian soldier is pretty unique, and they only made one of those. They yeah. Haven't yeah. Made any more figures for him. I remember seeing him in the, the scene leading to Anakin's taking out of the Separatist leaders. Yeah. They were guarding the door very ineffectively. <laughs> yeah, I, I like how they used the just the classic, what what kind of hat do you call it? Conquistador, yeah, Spanish. The, the Conquistador hat, they just gave it a yeah. different color. Mm -hmm. I Which never, suits him perfectly. I never went back to look. Does it suit yeah. him perfectly? I Is think that, it does. That's what yeah. it actually looked like in yeah. the movie. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> Yep. I wonder if George Lucas was incorporating that helmet just because he <laughs> likes that helmet this design and it's very unique and not everyone would think of it, but if you see it in a space setting, it would Why make would perfect sense. Why would a Neoidian yeah. wear a Conquistador helmet? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> a Lego Conquistador helmet. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to quickly mention uh, Chief Tarful here because um, 
he came out again, well, he was referenced again extensively later in the Jedi Fallen Order video game, which I played and very much enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, e I didn't even catch the fact that his name was Chief Tarful until re-watching it last night. I'm like, oh, that's Chief Tarful, yeah. duh, of course. And so it's hilarious. I, I saw him first in the video game that was referencing this movie and him. And then I watched it again, I'm like, oh, so all this Star Wars stuff is so inter interconnected, I love it. And forget trying to spell their names. Yeah. Yeah. On, Screen uh, service on Bricklink. Oh, yeah, uh, no. Tarful. I, I can't remember how to spell it, but it, it's not like it. Yeah. Not it, quite right. Wookiee spelling could be a little different. I mean, there's from... like what? How many Ys in Kashyyyk? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think there's like two I or think, three. Yeah, yeah, three. That is crazy. All right, so we've talked about this. Uh, and we talked about the one in front of you, Chris, there, that uh, clone turbo tank. Yeah, this one, of course, this one's from Clone Wars, but the tank was was in episode three mm -hmm. yeah so that specific set was designed to release with the clone wars tv show but um it's we're, we're we brought it up because we're, we're a little short on episode three sets we sold a lot of them they're very popular yeah and this vehicle was extensively used in the battle of kashyyyk uh, you see it launching missiles from its um you know little ports on the side it was very effective on that beachfront stopping the separate destroyers. so and that one includes Cad Bane, who's probably worth mentioning as well because uh, he's super expensive. You got all the other uh, Clone Wars style figures. Um, what's this guy's name, Ethan? I think it's a ADDP, ATDP. It's Something not the like ATDP. That. Oh, that's the one. That's that the was Rebels. Rebels. Yeah. yeah, whatever this guy is right here, the AT something. Somebody will make a comment. Mm -hmm. First person to make a comment wins. <laughs> um, Whatever this is, is it looks cool, but mm -hmm. the Lego build is just, it breaks so mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. It's these angles on the side, I bet, that cause that yeah. difficulty. Because it's like, how do you do that in Lego? It's a challenging shape. You definitely can't transport them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. just trying to get the doors open so that you can put the figure inside. It's got a whole control panel inside, but I always just kind of like rip off the door. <laughs> yeah. And know? this isn't the newest version. This is like the middle-aged version, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they've made newer versions which are probably more sturdy, but still, it's super challenging, especially anywhere near minifig scale. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember seeing these guys, first of all, moving around shooting stuff, but secondly, on the in the final Separatist moments, they had them on these hologram tables, and they were talking, I think they were talking oh, like, these yeah. guys are attacking us all the time, and then yeah. Anakin comes in and kills them all, so it didn't matter. But <laughs> Speaking yeah. of those cool little holograms, mm -hmm. um, Eclipse Graphics has made the little vehicles, like mm -hmm. the AT-AT and stuff, yeah. it, in holograms, small holograms. That's awesome. So you can use it with your Lego figures. Yeah, so shout out to Eclipse yeah. Graphics and his figures. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's who's yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah, they're awesome. All right, so, and then... Um, uh, going on the Battle of Kashyyyk, we've got this set here, the uh, 20th anniversary, the 20th anniversary, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 20 years of Lego Star Wars, and I love how they included that little uh, barricade in there with the Wookiee uh, soldier behind it, because yeah. that was a cool moment seeing hundreds yeah. of Wookiees all just having a uh, hoo -ah, you know, yeah. <laughs> they were getting ready to go out there and fight, and uh, it's like, they, it's only like 20 pieces, but it, it yeah. works, it, I don't know. It was also really cool seeing them defend Yoda. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's like they, they were on Yoda's side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they didn't have any uh, chips or um, Order sixty six yeah. interfering their judgment there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And those uh, spider droids, the mm -hmm. homing, what are these uh, spider droids? Yeah, yeah. The spider or homing droids or whatever, they're really cool too. I think the the homing spider droid is the really tall one, and that's just a spider. Yeah, droid. Gotcha. I'm not sure, but I yeah. think that's the case. I think that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these twentieth anniversary sets. They have just skyrocketed. Yeah. I really They're pretty didn't, collectible, yeah. didn't think they'd go up that quick. I think they're they, great sets, but they yeah. are just particularly collectible. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, what's the price on this one now here? So, $90. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is one of the better ones. And it's sealed. Yeah. It's new sealed, so the price is justified. It's probably more on Amazon and eBay, mm -hmm. but um, it's just amazing to see some of these. You can tell a good Star Wars set when it goes up in value, shoots up. So. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we'll set that one aside. We'll, we'll work through these as we get down. In what, so, who is your favorite uh, character from Episode 3? Anakin. 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 That's, that's what I thought you were yeah. going to say that. And I like Anakin. I actually like Hayden Christensen a lot mm -hmm. as an actor. Yeah. I think he's a great actor. He's the perfect role for uh, Anakin Skywalker, yeah. I thought. He really grew into it, especially in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but I mean Obi Wan Kenobi. Is <laughs> yeah, so he is cool. pretty awesome. Ewan yeah. McGregor is just such a great actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just thought he played the role perfectly. And this, what was cool about this movie is they really started to hone in on his hair mm-hmm. yeah. to look like the uh, Sir Alec Guinness. Yeah. Uh, in the, you know, episode four. Exactly. In episode uh, two, he has very up uppity young looking yeah. hair, yeah. and this one he's starting to look a little more mature. He's got it parted, and he's got the beard going yeah. on. So you can see yeah. a, a change in his appearance to sort of adapt him to uh, where he should be. And in talk, talk in about episodes. heartbreaking. Having your apprentice. I mean, they were together. Yeah. They fought together mm-hmm. so much. Having your apprentice just turn Sith on you. I just, I couldn't imagine it. Yeah, it's yeah. really uh, yeah. pulls at the emotional heartstrings. It would sure. have to. Yeah. yeah. I would say that in this movie, watching it again last night recently, um, some of the things that they absolutely nailed were the relationships that Anakin had with um, three of the important people in his life. His mentor, mm-hmm. uh, the, who ended up being the Sith Lord, his other mentor, uh, Obi-Wan, his, uh, his master, and then yeah. his, his wife, uh, Padme. Like, mm-hmm. all those things, you can just... He, uh, Aiden Christensen does, does an amazing job. You're like, you actually feel like, dude, they really care about each other, and the dialogue's a yeah. little bit wooden at times. But that that relationship really comes through. It's amazing. So, yeah. yeah. And I've I've read a lot of books about Star Wars mm-hmm. and uh, this using the Force specifically. And that's one thing the movie has a hard time. It's just hard, you know. In a book, it narrates it for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. whereas in a movie, there it's like, how could they be flying through space and not get hit by each, you know these mm-hmm. these Jedi? They can actually feel the force, and the force guides them through space, mm-hmm. flying these planes. That's why they're such good pilots. Yeah, and they it's can like fly intuition. without some yeah. random uh, laser beam hitting them. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and the same thing with uh, Emperor Palpatine. How he can disguise himself. He's mm-hmm. so powerful yeah. that he can disguise himself from Master Yoda, mm-hmm. actually picking up that he's a. Sith Lord. Exactly. He could just play the innocent. But a lot of this doesn't yeah. really get explained in the movie yeah. very well. I would say one scene that really struck me as a possible force moment, like you can kind of almost feel it, is when um, towards the end of the movie, Anakin's been told, uh, I think he actually told the, the, the council that he's a Sith Lord, and they went out to get him, and he's just hanging out in the yeah. room, and, he, and then there's like, they're cutting back and forth between him and Padme, and they're both like, they start out kind of somber, but then they end up both just like in tears looking at each other across the city. Yes. And it's like you can yeah. sense that they're just both feeling heartbreak at what's going on in the situation, and it's amazing. So it's like yeah. it, they, they, they tried and they did a good job with what they could, but they can't, mm-hmm. like every scene has that uh, nuance yeah. that might escape unless you kind of like really d- dive into it, dig into it, just like we are here in the video. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Very emotional movie. Yes. Heartbreaking, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. It really was, yeah. Like, y- your friend just gets baked to a, a crisp. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After you chop his arm off. Speaking yeah. of baked yeah. to a crisp, do we want to talk about this set, Ethan? Yeah. So You this have is, this one, I assume. I actually have the figs for this one. You don't have the set? No. I you didn't buy the no. set? This I probably is... will make a mock for it, though. Okay. But I didn't think the set was that accurate to Th- this is one star wars scene that i never get tired seeing a new mock of yeah because it's like whenever someone does it, it's a different interpretation of it I actually really enjoy it so yeah this it's is really one that i bought i normally am not a big star wars lego buyer but so this is the dual on mustafar yeah. the the newer Remaking. smaller one exactly yeah. this is a fraction of the size of the big one we have from the old days yeah, yeah. but i would say that as cool as the light of figures are the printing yeah, really comes through. Printing on the new figs is really good. Yeah, and but the build on both of them is just kind of eh. a little basic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like a, that. This 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 isn't a display piece. No, at all. The build is not. It's yeah. it's a little playset. Yeah. And what are they standing on over the lava? One of them has yeah. to be a droid, right? So this is a droid that Anakin hopped onto mm-hmm. after the whole thing they were on. So mm-hmm. lava, but this was just like a lava platform that I believe one of the. One of the Mustafarian workers was on, almost like a skiff, yeah, like a little uh, something platform. like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, that dual scene was yeah, intense, it was awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, for the thumb- thumbnail of this video, when we get a picture, let's all make an intense face, and I'll give us some yellow eyes and dark yeah. circles, so we're all turning Sith. We'll have to do that. <laughs> Ooh, that would look cool. Yeah. I put yeah. my hood up. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you got a hood. There you go. That'd be perfect. Yeah, oh, and yeah. that reminds me too. If you're listening to this and you d- you haven't gone back and listened to 
the episode one that we did mm-hmm. and episode two and uh, the um, Clone, Clone Wars. Wars. Yeah. Uh, go back and look at them because I'm dressed up as Darth Maul in one. I've got my face painted. Yep. That was in episode one. Yep. Yeah. I remember that. That was. That was awesome. And, and I then, think Ed is dressed up too. Mm-hmm. And Julian. Yeah, Ed had so, uh, uh, Jar Jar's ears, I think, for a little bit, <laughs> yeah, right? What's that wrong it? with you, Ethan? Yeah. You're not dressed up. Or are you dressed up as Anakin? I mean, I do have this shirt. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so. you do. That's right. For those who can't see, Ethan has yeah. a really cool custom t shirt with the, uh, yeah. the, the original saga video game uh anakin profile pic that you can select i'll put yeah. my hood up now i'm palpatine i'm wearing black so maybe i'm just like a sith worker i don't know <laughs> but um oh um speaking of uh workers or soldiers we've got these really cool battle packs here do you guys yeah. want to break those down for us here is that yeah. a homing droid i don't know the technical term for that does it say on the set it doesn't it just says it just says, pal, yeah. uh, troopers I remember seeing that one on Utapau, though, because it shoots those rockets. It's pretty yeah. scary. I wouldn't want to be running up against that, but those clones, they're brave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the uh, Utapau Troopers uh, Battle Pack, this is a sealed one. It's $120 now. Yeah. That's insane. I remember those guys being fairly affordable when that Battle Pack came out. You could, you yeah. know, get them in our army sizes almost, but now it's harder, especially sealed. Yeah. I remember when Toys R Us was still around, um, you could buy these on clearance for five bucks. Yeah. And I bought them. Actually, when a set goes on clearance, that means it wasn't always selling the best, or they made um, either, either, for some reason, it wasn't getting out there as much. And when a set has that occur, it can be much more later because it's not as many in, in circulation. So that can sometimes contribute to a massive price increase. Like, And I think yeah. it's just clone troopers are popular. They're always going to be popular. Mm-hmm. They're always yeah. going to be expensive versions of these clone troopers. Like here we got the Kashyyyk troopers we talked about earlier. Um, I love that we have camo clone troopers. Very tactical looking. Yeah. Um, I don't think we ever saw that vehicle in the movie, though. I think that's just made for the, the set. A little uh, speeder. Maybe. I don't, I don't recall seeing it, but mm-hmm. I feel like it would be in the movie. It could be. Because it was made in the original... Wookiee catamaran set mm-hmm. in 2005. So this was uh, this vehicle has appeared yeah. before. I'm sure it has. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, love the camo troopers. Love the scout trooper. This one's a hundred dollars for a sealed one. Mm-hmm. I mean that's a lot per figure, but at the same time they're all new. You you mint. gotta buy the battle packs when you see them because yeah. they've always gone up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even the uh, the basic episode seven rebel troopers, yeah. which I never thought would go up, mm-hmm. those have gone up. Yeah, they're it's like why? Yeah, I think it's just that the concept of having an army. Mm-hmm. Star Wars is very, uh, you know, rebels, empire, military based, and so uh, if you have specific troops that we want to collect, this is the only way to get them. Sometimes, like I don't think there's a lot of Kashyyyk troopers. There's older versions, and you got Gri, but other than that, I mean, where else do you find in Kashyyyk troopers yeah. or Utapau troopers? It's harder. Yeah, more rare. And here's one of their walkers right here. What exactly. are the smaller walkers called? They're scout walkers. That's the yeah, scout, walker. scout walkers. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is the one from that set. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a really cool that and yeah. the five hundred first one. I think are it's really the same cool. design, just recolored. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a great it's a, walker. It is a great walker. Mm-hmm. Remember seeing when uh, Yoda was making his escape from uh, Kashyyyk? Those guys were running around actually yeah. hunting Wookies. Yeah, because they were like, "These Wookies are dead. Let's go over there." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the clones had already turned on the Wookiees after the that morning they had been fighting the droids together. Yeah, That's and it, there's a whole battle there. I'm sure that mm-hmm. ensued after Yoda left. Yeah, that I would love to see that. That could be yeah. a whole series in itself if it could, Disney wanted yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves Wookiees. Yeah, and especially yeah. with this new uh, black chrysanthemum that's mm-hmm. out. I mean, I would love to see a minifigure of him. He looks a lot like Chief Tarful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just make him black with some gold yeah. accessories, like yeah. really gold, uh, you know, yeah. jewelry and that stuff. Would probably sell yeah, I mean, well. he is just awesome. I'd get one of those in yeah, the art. Yeah, I would that would too. be awesome. And then one of the Wookiee warriors has a tattoo mm-hmm. arm, yeah, which is really cool too. Nice. Right on his arm. Yep. Yep. All right, here's a little lady here we haven't mentioned yet. Oh yes. Is this Luminara Unduli? It is. I get her and her uh, apprentice confused yes. a lot. Is it Barris? Um, it's Barris. Barris, Hoffie, yeah. Hoffie. Uh, Barris was the traitor, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. she betrayed in the Clone Wars. Yeah. yeah. Um, what race is she? So it's, it's a cool race. She's yeah. got the tattoos on her. Mm-hmm. Um, does she die at the end? 
I believe so. Yes. Did they, she they show her getting that. cut down by clowns? I don't think so, but she was never seen after Revenge of the Sith, yeah, it, to it, my knowledge. It's one of those, uh, they ran out of time and probably budget for CGI for all yeah. these uh, deaths, but yeah. I, I loved going back and watching it after seeing them bring back some more Jedi and Rebels and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That it's like, oh, this person escaped, this person escaped. Mm-hmm. And because it's like, oh, okay, they didn't show this person dying. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're still alive. Exactly. There's always a chance if you don't actually see them get vaporized on screen. Who would you there's like a chance to, they'll come back? Who yeah. do you have the most hope for that could still be alive? Mace Windu. I would love to see Mace Windu come yeah. back. They just, didn't show him dead. Yeah. He just he went and zappity zap yeah. into the horizon. Uh, and you know, somebody no, so. as powerful as Mace Windu. Yeah. I mean, I would think he could use the force to. Yeah. Here is our version yeah. of Mace Windu. I mean, we had Darth Maul got chopped in half and fell. Who knows for how Yeah, if Darth Maul survived so, multiple sure times, then... I've, I've nice got kid. mine right here in my hand. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And he played a small role in episode three. Okay, I'm ready. Very small role. Take a guess. <sighs> they made a Lego minifigure of him, but he's not an episode three figure. Oh, okay. He's a uh, Jedi. He's a Jedi. <sighs> they didn't show him get cut down. I have no mm-hmm. idea. I, I'm drawing a complete blank. He's one of the bad boys. Is this it? Or no. no, 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 Jedi, Jedi. Um, a lot of people thought he might be a Sith at one point, though. <laughs> is it um, Shaggy? Is it? <laughs> no, he died. Yeah. Yeah. Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Well, they, no. you remember? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. what up? Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised Ethan's not getting it. I have no idea. <laughs> Quinlan. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Quinlan yeah. Yep. Quinlan Voss. Uh, he they, didn't appear in Rebels or anything. I haven't seen all of Rebels, so I don't know. I don't know. think he was in. He was in Clone Wars. He yes. was in Clone Wars. And he's been in a, like a lot of comics. I think mm-hmm. they even had he had his own comic, and he went undercover. Gotcha. And in the underground, and carried a red lightsaber. I think mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. wanted people to think that he was a Sith, but wow. he wasn't. That's cool. Um. I think so, I do remember seeing him like in the background of Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was in the background. He might have been, really? but uh, Obi Wan's telling Anakin uh, what's going oh, on, yeah. and he's like, "And uh, Master Vos is on mm-hmm. leading the troops on this planet." Yeah, he was mentioned. Yeah. He yeah. was mentioned, mm-hmm. but he they didn't show what happened to him. Gotcha. So. Knowing Quinlan Vos, he totally survived. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, yeah, survival he attitude. He just looks like he would not die. You know. <laughs> yeah. Mark, I know you know this, but Ethan, whose hair does Quinlan Vos have? Ooh, another character that has the hair. Um, you asking about? I know the new one has the Thorn Oakenshield hairpiece. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That this looks like one, uh, Mary Jane. You know? Me. No. 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 Uh, Mary Jane might have this hair, the old but it's Mary Hermione. Jane. Hermione, oh, Hermione. yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. the old oh, Hermione. Hermione had that hair. So yeah. he's, when I look at this, I, <laughs> yeah. I like the figure. Don't get me wrong, but he does have Hermione's hair. You're, that yeah. sh- shape of hairpiece <laughs> reminds you of Hermione. Yeah, so. yeah. that is fun. Yeah. He is a cool Jedi, though. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, we've discussed this vehicle walking around. Uh, I want to talk about General Grievous's ship a little bit. We got it over there. What are you guys' thoughts on this vehicle? I think this is the latest version because it has those gold yeah. flowers on the edge. But uh, what are your thoughts? I think. It's actually pretty well designed because mm-hmm. you can see the it has like lightsaber storage on it. Oh, nice! On both sides, so that's pretty sweet. And then the cockpit like slides open, which is. Mm-hmm. Did the older cool. versions of the set not have this opening feature right here? They just popped. The up? old ones actually did have this feature. Okay. I don't think the original had the lightsaber storage. So this is new, but that is still yeah. a carryover. That was always on it. Mm-hmm. And this is the largest one, piece count so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they've made, like, three versions of the ship, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And I would have to say this is probably one of the more tragically overlooked mm-hmm. sets. Uh, it's a cool spaceship, and it's always got a really cool tile design on the inside there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty cool building te- technique how they did that. Yeah. yeah. And um, the older ones had that, too, just in different colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think this one is a little bit overlooked because I feel like this set was a tiny bit overpriced. This mm. this version of it. Yeah. Some of the other ones aren't so much, but it, it had like three figures and it was what, like $80, $90? Yeah, it was just a lot of money. I think it goes for like 100 on Amazon now. Yeah, so it's. You, it's you basically a bought it for. Uh, this guy. Grievous. Yeah. <laughs> and the Airborne Trooper. The Airborne Trooper was exclusive, yeah. but that was the only one that was exclusive to that set. Mm-hmm. So. 
And General Grievous is like every 12 year old who likes lightsabers dream is being a yeah. robot that can fight with four at one time. So. Yeah. General Grievous is what got me into selling Lego, I think. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I had a, a lot of things got me into it, mm -hmm. but I had a, a elementary school kid at my house probably like 10 so years ago, mm -hmm. and I had the original uh, Grievous figure in a being a Lego that my son and I were playing with. Mm -hmm. And he was over at my house and he said, hey, this guy's worth 20 bucks. And I'm like, look at it. This General Grievous guy? This little thing? Yeah. No, Random little no character. way, no way. I looked it up on eBay and he was worth like $40. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Wait a second. Hello. I've got a couple of him and yeah. I've got a couple of this guy and this guy and this guy and that just like, just opened up my mind. Yeah. So how Lego is a is could be a business yes. possibility. Yeah. So. Yeah. And speaking of General Grievous, there's oh, yes. his yeah, this is his wheel original wheel bike. Yeah. It's the old school one. Like mm -hmm. going with this uh with is this Boga. a BOGO? Yeah, BOGO. Yeah. yeah. And then they had the newer wheel bike, which is a lot better. Yeah. It's like, a lot bigger. It's yeah. got like the tank treads around mm -hmm. it. It's pretty wicked looking. It's but this one has bionicle legs, so I mean you can make the argument that Yeah. <laughs> I think they're both Cool and it has everywhere. cool colors. It's yeah, got yeah. the sand uh, blue on it, mm -hmm. which is. I cool. think the new one does too, of course. But yeah, yeah. Um, it's 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 neat. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah, we do. You see a lot of these mm -hmm. in a lot of collections. I think they made a lot of them. What's funny is you don't see as many bogas. No, I, I think, think that's these the pieces only one. get lost. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they didn't make a, another one. It was just the wheel bike and one. Yeah, set. and the bogas feet get lost a lot, mm -hmm. and yeah. it was always my natural inclination to put the feet on like that. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. toes facing forward. Yeah, like right. he's clawing forward. <laughs> but that's forward. not the way bogos walk. Apparently, it's yeah. like that. Like they, the, they kind of flap yeah. when they're running. I think it's yeah. more reptilian to have your hands out like that. You're right. So, I think it yeah. is. But that's a that was a really cool animal and a scene uh, for Obi Wan to jump on. Yeah, the yeah. boga. Yeah. It also, pretty good CGI too, because it was that was they clearly didn't have a, a guy in a big di uh, you know reptile suit running around. It was mm -hmm. just all 3D animation. Yeah. So. Well, um, Ethan, you want to describe this ship in detail for us? What, what are we looking yeah. at here? What's this, this yellow is, thing? This is the I think it's the ETA like two starfighter or something. It's the one that Anakin flies in the beginning of Episode Three. Are these Anakin's colors for ships? They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are specific to Anakin. He also had a green one in the later, later uh, version of the movie. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And these guys, um, this is what they opened the movie with. This one and Obi Wan's, right? Yeah. Or is it? Yeah, it was these. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Obi Wan's is red. Now, one question that I have for you guys is. These guys are awesome, and they use a hyperspace ring to fly mm -hmm. long distances. We talked about that in the uh, episode two video, but um, I, I often see Jedi flying a different type of starfighter. It's more like a uh, pure like Plo Koons. Yeah, yeah. Plo Koons. Yeah. What is the difference between that and this? Well, maybe. Then this is just a guess. Just a maybe guess. the other one has its own um, hyperdrive. Hyperdrive. Yeah. So yeah, do you so know about one. that, Ethan? What's the difference between the fighter, more fighter style one, and the more like long, um, sleeker looking one? Um, I don't know. Because Anakin like... did have a longer. Yeah, sleeker. Did. there's many sets. White of that and blue, one. right? Uh, that yeah. was another one. I think Anakin's is also yellow. Okay. He's a yeah. yellow one that's long. He's a yeah. yellow yes. one that's fighter. So. Yeah. I would think that the these would be just faster in universe, but mm -hmm. I don't know. More maneuverable, maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. I guess with the wings flapping, they can too. And I guess the longer ones are we we're, we're theorizing that they did have a hyperdrive and they could yeah. make it move farther. So yeah, interesting. Well, they actually those used hyperdrive rings as well. Oh, they did. Yeah, because in episode two, Obi Wan has one when he went to go find Jenga. Okay, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah. That's Obi Wan's. So is his red. I think they all had hyperspace rings, but interesting. Something about this one. I this is uh, something they might make a use UCS set of. One I day. could see that. Yeah, that'd be they really did, cool. They did Obi Wan's. Right, they uh, did the, as a UCS. the episode two one, yeah, yeah, yeah the long one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, they're making like Luke's land speeder as a UCS set. So <laughs> yeah, honestly, anything's possible at this point. Uh, well, the the land speeder is very iconic. Yeah, it is. I think uh, that'll be a cool set to, to yeah. display, and and I would actually really love to see this kind of Jedi yeah. fighter on display too. I remember in the game Jedi Fallen Order, which I'll reference many times. Yeah. Um, they uh, in the beginning of the game, the two scrappers find this, and Cal Kestis has like a flashback because he sees it. The Jedi interceptor yeah. crashed into a uh, um, a Venator, 
And he's like, he remembers all the Jedi stuff because he was been kind of trying to forget it and hide. And right. So it's really interesting. That's cool. Yeah. yeah that so is very cool, cool yeah. moment. And it's it, it was this one, and they were like, oh my gosh, it's a Jedi fighter. We're rich. You know? Yeah. Because <laughs> so, it's got all this high tech in it, so it's really cool. So that is a cool yeah. vehicle. Uh, if you know in the comments what the difference between this style of Jedi vehicle and the longer one is, we'd love to know because that's always kind of plagued me. It's like, wait, wait. But they yeah. have this one, but they have that one. They upgraded them all to this, but I just I never yeah. figured what out What was why. the change? Yeah, yeah, maybe it was just like kind of like phase one armor versus phase two armor for clones. It looks different, maybe. you know. Yeah. Better toys, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, what, I'm curious what the, the cause of that was. But, uh, so what have we not talked about on the table? Everything but We've this. Yeah. And this and is a couple the, of uh, how many of these have they made? They've two made now? two of them, yeah. Okay. The and original one was very small, and this one was a lot more elaborate. I'm surprised they've only made two because it is so iconic. I like yeah. that little uh, motion there. Yeah, you can you can look from that way. That <laughs> this, this was a good set. I mean, it was a cheap way to get Darth Vader and yeah. Palps you get, and a burned Anakin. You get Uncle Palpatine and mm -hmm. you get uh, the burned Anakin and like three droids. Like yeah, even this little guy right here. Yeah, it's a droid. Yeah. 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 You had the larger one. He's not on this particular version of the set, but there's a larger one with all the tools. And he's yeah. cool. He's a neat. He's, pretty sweet, he's a yeah. neat droid. Mm -hmm. and then you get kind of a lamer droid, the middle, medium sized one. Yeah. 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 But uh, that was another impactful scene. Is Anakin is being turned into a huge cyborg Vader. Um, Padme's dying as yeah. they cut back yeah. and forth, and so that, and he's like, no. And I know people think it's silly, but it was like, Dang. oh, it's, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, it was awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a tragic ending to that, uh, well, tragic segue into the next part of the story, I would mm -hmm. say, because they're immediately introducing, uh, dropping off of uh, Anakin, uh, uh, yeah, excuse me, Luke and Leia, because Anakin's kids, obviously. But, um, yeah. Looking Actually, this, this is pretty good timing, because the new Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, TV series is, should pick up where almost where this left off. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I think it literally is like a few years later. You have little baby yeah. Luke mm -hmm. playing his ship, and uh, Obi Wan's just kind of watching him, making sure he's yeah. good, and whatever adventures him and the Inquisitors have after that. Is when would the show comes out? We'll find out. So, yeah. really looking forward to that. What are you guys gonna watch that like at one in the morning? Or are you guys? Absolutely. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> just all excited about yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I I have to watch it with my wife. I can't mm -hmm. just watch it ahead of time or she'll yep. get mad at me. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, it'll probably be, it's going to come out on a Wednesday probably. Yeah, probably yeah. the middle so of the week. It'll yeah. probably be Wednesday evening, but mm -hmm. uh, everybody at work will just have to be quiet about it. Yep. We do have those rules. You can't either, either it's like, okay, everybody has to watch this before they come to work, mm -hmm. or it's like nobody's allowed to talk about it. Out loud. And le you can go over to the corner <laughs> and talk about it out yeah. of earshot. Because yes. when, yeah. you, when, you when you have a pop culture store like this, mm -hmm. people, everybody's coming in. Hey, did you see this? Did you see this? Mandalorian, <laughs> Boba Fett, Hawkeye, yeah. everything we couldn't yeah. talk about for a long time because not everyone had seen it. So. Ooh, Mark, I just had a good idea for you. What's that? All right, take this and make it into a UFO. Oh. style totally yeah. good classic yeah. ufo ship you know but with the mm, with the head up front that does look the same parts yeah exactly it's very similar parts yeah. yeah yeah very similar shape to my tank battles ufos but yeah. i think you're ready to move on from that probably um i the, i'll keep the them UFO together army. but i'm gonna make some new stuff at some point soon for sure but uh Yep, I think we've have we pretty much covered all the stuff on the table and everything we wanted to talk about episode three. What's not here? I'm sure there's something that's not here. Um, um, oh, oh, one quick thing I want to talk about. A little bit more about when Palpatine was arrested. There's an amazing yeah. set that features all the Jedi. Yes. And we don't have it with us right now. We've sold several in the past six, seven months. But um, it's an awesome set. And it's expensive because it's... Palpatine's uh, arrest probably is the most popular set from episode three mm -hmm. yeah um, all the jedi masters yeah and i think it, like every figure is like 50 dollars plus it now. is rare was that a yeah. walmart exclusive or was it a toys r us exclusive i don't know the background of that it set, might have I, been a lego store exclusive because i remember seeing it in the store but i'm not sure a lego shop at so, home exclusive or something like yeah, that possibly, yeah possibly so. it, it does seem to be a very rare set mm -hmm. and those yeah. figures are just they've always been expensive yeah even uh, when it was relatively yeah. recently discontinued they were still like that Palpatine, the uh, Kit Fisto, all you yeah. know, all those you know, amazing figures. Mm -hmm. so. yep. And we we get it in, and it's gone. Yeah. The next day. 
yeah. yeah. It'll it'll be not too long before we get another one, but uh, keep an eye on the Facebook posts because mm-hmm. it'll be gone within an hour of posting it. And we've got on our website now, I think Joe has classified episode three figures and sets, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can look up specific episode three minifigures and sets from that subcategory mm-hmm. on our website through the navigation. So if you go to sets... You scroll on Star Wars, hit the arrow, it'll show you all the different Star Wars movies, and then you just select the one that you're looking for. In this case, episode three, because we're talking yeah. about it. So. I do like one more thing, is mm-hmm. I like Dooku here. Yes, yeah. can't, can't not talk about Dooku. And how his lightsaber has continued to stay chrome. Mm-hmm. And I wonder how long they're going to keep doing that for. Yeah, they haven't made Dooku in a few years. When was the last time they made they, it? 2013? 20, yeah, 2013. Yeah. They, they stopped ma- but they stopped making the chrome lightsabers long before yeah. that. Yeah, that's the last that's chrome lightsaber. But they seen. still made yeah. his chrome. So yeah. uh, maybe it's because of the shape. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But that's a, Maybe because Dooku had style. You never yeah. <laughs> he was known as a master swordsman. Mm-hmm. When he was yeah. a Jedi, he was like the, the sword master. Yeah. That was his thing. Yeah. The dueling. Yeah. So that, again, that could be, it could have been a little better duel, I guess. But yeah. he was, he was on his Palpatine way out. Palpatine could have been doing something. Nerfing him. Yeah. yeah. He could have been doing something there to make him lose. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. at, like, before the fight ensued, Palpatine told Dooku just to toy with Anakin and that Palpatine would stop Anakin from killing Dooku. Uh, and, so that's kind of a kind of uh, to the point, story mo- Palpatine moment. Palpatine didn't say anything. Well, that makes died. a lot of sense. Yeah, because yeah. Dooku did have, like, a surprised look on his face. Yeah. And then, especially when yeah. he said, kill him, he's like, what? Yeah. yeah. yeah I think Dooku was told just to toy with Anakin, and then it that, didn't go well. Yeah, uh, uh, Palpatine thought must have thought that Dooku was, like, maybe more trouble than it was worth. It was time yeah. to phase him out and just, like, absolutely Replace betrayed him. him. Yeah. yeah. Now, answer me this. So Dooku was a Sith Lord mm-hmm. at the same time as Darth Maul. Uh, in theory, but at the same time, he was also a Jedi. Yeah. For that, mm-hmm. so and, and um, I don't know what when there, the transition. There is. is a role of two. Mm-hmm. Right. So, master and apprentice. Yeah. My so, guess is he's probably he probably was a Jedi in Phantom Menace, and then I guess transitioned. Maybe a disillusioned movies. Jedi in Phantom yeah. Menace. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe, I don't probably. know. That uh, sounds like another story that needs to be told. Sounds yeah. like another. If someone knows the tell you uh, what, Disney needs to get on the ball yeah. and start filling in some of these gaps. Mm-hmm. Well, they're they're trying. We got at yeah. least an Obi Wan watching a, it's Luke. It's an absolute goldmine. Yeah. Everybody wants to see it. Yep. Everybody, wants, yeah. everybody wants to know. Exactly. There's a lot of uh, space between all the trilogies. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting. Yep. Um, but I will say, uh, Count Dooku um, kind of had an interesting appearances throughout the media that Star Wars has made. Um, one, one of the earlier ones was the 2D animated Clone Wars, and he was so OP in that one, and so was Grievous. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the Clone Wars, he was always kind of the brains behind everything. He didn't actually do a lot of fighting. A little bit. Not all yeah. the time. And then in uh, the, uh, the uh, Revenge of the Sith, you didn't get to see him a lot, and that was kind of his end. So it was a little bit, I would say, maybe it's just a tiny bit of a disappointment. Didn't get to see a grand finale. But it's mm-hmm. also like, he I think he was ab- absolutely betrayed by yeah. Palpatine. So definitely don't make friends with the Sith. Don't uh, trust your Sith master. He'll probably betray you. Or vice versa. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for sticking with us and listening to us talk about all these amazing Episode 3 sets and minifigures and our observations from the movie. Um, what are your thoughts on episode three? Is it your favorite Star Wars movie? Is it your least favorite Star Wars movie? Why is it that way? Um, we'd be happy to hear what you have to say. And um, if you have other ideas for videos, let us know. And definitely hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons. It always helps the algorithms. We sure appreciate it. Um, we've got plenty more videos coming out next week. So we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.